Hello, everyone. This is Kate Okoli. I'm happy to be on your way again today. Today's topic is about sleeping with a friend's husband. Sleeping with my best friend's husband. Uh, there's a lot going on uh, these days where a lot of things happen. Um, it's like conscience is thrown to the wind. People sort of um, get involved in all kinds of unhealthy relationships. Even though from the beginning they know that such relationships are not acceptable, they still sometimes want to go into it for different reasons. Perhaps maybe because they want to spite a friend sometimes maybe because they are jealous of the relationship that that friend has either with a husband or with a boyfriend and then perhaps sometimes the friend comes around to say oh my boyfriend bought me this or my husband bought me this he's such a nice guy and all of that and then she just sort of innocently talks about her spouse uh, to the best friend so to say and then the friend now deter obviously determines in her heart that a, either she's going to make sure she destroys that relationship or she's going to make sure she takes the man from her best friend so um i decided to talk about this um mind-blowing um issue today because obviously i've been talking to a very young um uh, lady and then um, she said to me she told me very um, heartbreaking story about a couple who actually um, are friends with um, a younger a younger girl who obviously they made a part of their family and then she used to come around the, the their household she knows the children she's close to the man she's close to the wife and all of that and they took her as part of their family unknown to the the wife all this while her husband has been sleeping with the with, with this young woman and then the relationship obviously went on and he was doing things for her buying her expensive gifts taking her out to the extent that he even got her a job and at the end of the day uh, obviously one thing led to the other and, and of course most times when things are hidden one day it's going to be obviously all, all over the place and somebody told somebody and somebody else told the wife and she checked the husband's phone and then found out all kinds of nude photos of her husband and this young lady so now the point i'm trying to make is what would make a young beautiful woman decide to break the trust that was reposed on her by a husband by a wife and even the children of the relationship what would make any any young woman or what would make a friend decide to sleep with her best friend's husband so it could be either two or three things the very first one could be that that young woman she doesn't understand who she is she doesn't have confidence in who she is because here is a man who is married he's, he's settled he's got his wife he's got his children he's settled and of course maybe he makes passes at you and or maybe you manage to to succeed in seducing him the man is settled with his wife and the wife is your best friend no matter what the man says to you about his wife no matter what you might want to tell the husband about this best friend of yours this is a married man so no matter the lies that the man may have told you you owe your friend that honor of friendship to not betray her but in this day and time, things like this happen. People don't really, obviously, they don't understand who they are. And people are desperate. People actually sort of, they want to take the man that their best friend has. They want to be with that man on 
unknown to them they don't know the things that 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 what exactly is holding this man and this woman together they don't know the journey they how they started their, their journey how they struggled together how they are where they are now they don't know how where the man was at the time that this woman met him it could be that at a, at a stage in their lives, they, they were like eating even once in a, uh, once a day. They weren't having their three square meals. The man wasn't as handsome as, as, as obviously the, you, you are seeing him now. He wasn't as wealthy or as comfortable. He didn't have that flashy car. And then he started with his wife right from the scratch. And now everything looks beautiful. Everything looks... Uh, everything obviously is so to say the man is comfortable the man is uh, wealthy the man is looking handsome and then obviously they've trusted you and they've brought you into their home and the best thing you could do to that best friend would be to sleep with a husband so it could be that maybe you as a woman as a young woman you don't know who you are you don't have confidence enough to to think or to remember that you can get your own man. You don't have to be a side chick. You don't have to hurt or to betray your best friend. You don't have to hurt the children of the relationship. You are just being selfish at that point in time. You're thinking, oh, he's going to leave her and uh, eventually marry me. You don't need to hurt any man or any woman in order for you to be happy. You don't have to because the, the the same thing the same way you obviously you dealt with that best friend of yours is still going to come back right at you four years down the line five years down sometimes it, it might even be, be shorter maybe two years one one year down the line you start having problems with this man And then you end up destroying the whole, uh, the, the household, destroy the lives of the children. I'll tell you a little bit. So when there's a problem between a husband and wife, and there's a problem in the relationship, don't, do not look at just the picture of just the man and the woman. There's a whole lot involved. The woman can end up in mental hospital, in psychiatric hospital. The children will be affected by that separation and divorce. So you are not only hurting your your best friend, you are hurting the children, you are hurting the even the children's children, you are hurting a whole lot of people that, that are attached to and obviously that are aware and that are part of that relationship. So at the end of the day, you, I mean, you are, you, you are losing out because you've not gained anything. You are indirectly saying to yourself, you, you're not valuable. You cannot find your own man. You, you don't feel confident enough that any man can accept you for who you are. Sometimes some women, they do these things to spite their friends. And then sometimes they see the friend, maybe she's happy, she's glowing, everything is going f well for her. And you're thinking, oh, I'm going to bust her bubble. Is he only her? I'll make sure I sleep with the husband so that obviously there will be a problem. She's not going to be happy anymore. In trying to spite that friend of yours, you're undoing yourself. Because your, your self-worth is at stake, your value is at stake, so you're not just thinking about now, you're not just thinking about let me hurt the friend, let me spite her, let me tell her that she is not the only one that obviously that is meant for this man, let me break the marriage, there's a whole lot involved. And then of course, as it is said, what goes around comes around. If you hurt a best friend, if you betray a friend who has trusted you with her husband, she has trusted you with her children, she's trusted you with her home, and then you end up hurting her. What goes around comes around.
you will end up becoming heartbroken no matter what even if the man leaves you leaves the wife for you you will somehow nemesis will definitely catch up with you so if you go around sleeping with your friend's husband in the dark there are some women, uh, they are sleeping with the friend's husband. They still visit the, the home. They pretend when they come, the friend confides in them, tells them about everything that's going on in the marriage. And yet they still go behind. They become um, um, like, like an FBI. Whatever the wife tells them, they take it back to the man. And then they are relay, relaying the story back to the man, everything their friend has told them. And then, they, they, and then they obviously they end up sleeping with the man and then it just goes on and on and on and on. So what, if you are a woman out there and you are involved or indul indulging in this kind of conduct, what you're saying to, to the man, you, you obviously, you are saying to the man that you are cheap, you don't have value. The man is settled, he's already settled with his wife, he's got, he's got children, he's married. And then for every relationship that you have with a man or with a woman that you cannot bring out to the public, the man is not bold enough to come out with you to tell the world that this is the woman I want to be with the rest of my life. Or even during the period of the courtship, yeah, this is my woman, this is my wife or my girlfriend or something like that. Then you are indirectly saying to yourself, you have no value. You don't value who you are. You you are more than what you are portraying yourself to be because that is not what God created you to be. You're making yourself a second best. A man is having a relationship with you, is telling you he loves you, and you know he's your, your best friend's husband. And he's telling you, oh, my wife did this, my wife did that, I'm going to leave her, I'm going to marry you, and all of that. But he cannot bring you out in public to introduce you to his friends, to introduce you to his family members, not even his cousins. It shows that it's, it shows the level that you've put yourself even as a woman. It is wrong. So you go into the relationship empty, you get out of it empty. There's no satisfaction in it, to be quite honest. There is definitely no satisfaction in, in that kind of hidden relationship because you do everything in the dark. He's hiding you. He sees you in public. He cannot obviously even give you a hug or give you a peck or even go close to you. He pretends as if there is nothing between the two of you. So what exactly are you enjoying in that relationship? What do you enjoy about being a side chick? What do you enjoy about being a second best? You are more than that. That is not what God created you to be. So if you are sleeping with your best friend's husband, you are indirectly saying, obviously, that your friend is superior to you. You are eating from the crumbs. She's eating from the table. That is not what God created you to be. You, are, you should be more than that. You should have your own men. You should have, you should go out there and obviously pray to God to send you, to direct you to your own man, a man who will value you, a man who can take you to the end of the world, show the whole world that he is with you, introduce you to his family members, to his friends, not hiding, hiding. Whenever he sees his wife, he's hiding. Whenever he sees any family member, he's hiding you. He can't come out and boldly tell anyone that he's with you. And then you are there marking time. That is not what God created you to be as a woman. You're portraying yourself like as if you're a slut. You're portraying yourself as if you are cheap. You're an adulterer. And then you're portraying yourself to be worthless. You're portraying yourself to be dirty. To be a woman, you don't have any value. That is not what God created you to be. And then you are betraying a friend because you, you want to be spiteful. And then she's confiding in you and you're using all the information against her. 
You are betraying the children who call you auntie. So you are not hurting only yourself. You are hurting every other person that is connected to this relationship. And then you're trying to make yourself happy and you say, no, the man doesn't even, he doesn't even love your best friend. He doesn't even love her. Of course, that's, uh, he's going to tell you what you want to hear so he can obviously have his way with you. What, what would you expect? What, what do you expect that he will tell you at that point in time? So imagine that you're in the position of that woman, that best friend of yours, and then you get married tomorrow and another best friend is doing the same thing to you. How would that make you feel? So each time you sleep with your best friend's husband, you are indirectly saying to yourself, I am inferior to my best friend. I cannot get my own man. I'm not good enough to have my own man. That is what you're saying. You are also saying you are not a reliable person. You are not dependable. You cannot be, you cannot be trusted. A lot of times, a lot of people, they have this, I don't care attitude. They can be, they, when you've reached a point in your life, when you don't care anymore about what people say about you, even if those things that are being said, they are real. You can only say you don't care if false rumors are being carried about around around town about you. If the rumors, if they are false, then you can obviously come out boldly to say, I don't care. But a situation where if you are doing the wrong thing and it's being talked about and you're going about saying, I don't care, I don't care. When you get to that point in life, you need to sit back and begin to ask yourself questions. So if you get to the point in life where you are bold enough to sleep with a best friend's husband, and then you are still friends with the woman, you still visit her at home, you still chat with her, you still hang out with her, then you are no more, you are not, you are no more human. Because what else is remaining? You could actually kill that, that friend. If you see something that will hurt her, you can do it. There is no excuse whatsoever. I hear some people say, well, at the end of the day, it's the man. If the man makes him, obviously makes a passes at the woman. But it takes two to tango. If the man makes passes at you, you need to show integrity to respect that friendship, to say no. And then you run far, far, far away. Even if you feel you're not going to disclose to the wife, because obviously you don't want to create a kind of um, a problems between the husband and wife. You run far, far, far away. And then posterity will pay you back. So if you are um, hardened enough to the extent that you don't feel anything again, you don't feel anything, you can sleep with anybody, you can do whatever you like, and then on Sunday you pick up your Bible, you go to church and you come back and you are living a reckless life. Your life does not belong to you. You are accountable to God. You are accountable to, because at the end of the day, even if your friend leaves, even if the, the marriage breaks up and then the man ends up getting married to you, nemesis will definitely catch up with you. You know, you see nemesis, the law of retribution, it will definitely catch up with you. How can you sleep with your best friend's husband? 
a friend you sit with, you chat with her, you eat with her, you discuss all kinds of girly things with her, and then you go behind her, you you break that trust, and then you sleep with her, and then you, you go ahead and you start sleeping with your, your best friend's husband, and you call it civilization, and you call it being smart. How can you? How can you justify that? And then at the same time, you are praying for God to find you your own husband. So you, you got to stop it now. It is wrong. There is no justification to it. Whether the man has made a pass at you, whether you are the one planning to make a pass at the man, there is no justification for you sleeping with your best friend's husband. It is a betrayal of trust. You are sending a, a negative signal. You are saying to that man that you are worthless. You are saying to that man that you don't have value. You are saying to that man that you don't have self-respect. The man is using you. He's abusing you. He's misusing you. Because he already he has his wife and his children. So it's, an, it, 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 it's a breach of trust. If the man is not strong enough to respect that relationship, then you as the woman, you should flee. Flee from all kinds of temptations that has to do with you sleeping with your best friend's husband. So don't say, oh, after all, you didn't chase the man. The man chased you. So what? He's not going to rape you. If you don't obviously accept also to sleep with him, you need to respect that friendship that you have with the man's wife. Respect the friendship that you have with the man's wife. She brings you, uh, she, she calls you her best friend. The two of you, you're on Facebook, you're taking photos, you're going everywhere. People know you together. And then you, you, and then behind you are checking out her man, you're checking out her husband, and you're sleeping with a man. You're saying to yourself, you're a slut, you don't have value for yourself. And I tell you, you are better off than that. This is not what God created you for. You cannot end up being the second best. You don't have to hurt people in order to be happy. You don't have to hurt your friend, your best friend, in order to take her man, in order to be happy. That is selfishness. You don't have to hurt the children of the relationship in order to be happy. And again, you're sending a wrong signal because it, it obviously there's this thing about men, women relationship. A lot of times men actually think that women are cheap. So it's like, you, 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 so there's a narrative. That men think that, oh, you know, I can get any woman. Is it not that woman? I can get her if I want her. So it's like you're giving a negative narrative about women. You sh you're obviously telling the men that women don't have self-respect. Women don't care. They don't understand who they are. You are what much, much, much more than that. So if you're a woman out there and you, you've been sleeping with your best friend's husband, you need to stop it now. Because it is deeper than the way, the surface value of what you're, you're doing. It's not about sex. It's not about the money. It's not about the gift that you're getting from that man. You are breaking the happy. You are hurting a whole lot of people. You are not only hurting your best friend. You are hurting the children of the relationship. You are hurting the stability of the family. And you are hurting the community. Because if that marriage breaks because of you, the community is affected directly or indirectly. I tell 
tell you there are lots and lots of side effects of divorce on children. Children end up in the streets. Sometimes they end up homeless. Sometimes they end up uh, getting into wrong companies. They end up getting into knife crime. They end up into getting into drugs. They end up into so many things. Those are the side effects of divorce. And then you are there, you're saying you are sleeping with the man because of your own selfishness. And then you, if it's going to be traced, it's traced to you that you are the one that destroyed that family. And so Nemesis is going to catch up with you. Nemesis is the law of retribution. So what you saw, you reap. So you destroy a family, you are going to reap destruction. And so you break the trust that a friend has reposed on you. She trusted you and you're sleeping with her husband. You are going to get the repercussion. So it's not about you and the man alone. There's a lot involved. And I, I'm saying to you this evening, you are much, much, much than that. So each time, the, any time the man comes and says, you know, you're beautiful, you, are, you say, I'm going to report it to your wife. And then you will see he's going to run away. Or if he says to you, okay, you know what, let's get down, let's be so. He said to him, you know what, divorce your wife first and then you come to me. You'll see he will never come back to you because he's not ready to divorce his wife anyway. He just wants to use you as a side chick. So the moment you say to him, go and divorce your wife and then come back to me, he's going to stay clear of you. And then you know what? He's going to have a lot of respect for you. He will know that you are a woman of integrity. He will know that you are a woman of substance. And I tell you, you never know. That same man may even have a, a, a cousin or a nephew who he might want to ref obviously introduce to you to, ma to get married to you because you have proved to him that you are a woman of integrity. So you've got to be careful. So each time you are planning, oh, I'm going to sleep with my best friend's husband, you've got to be careful. The implication. So sometimes when we make choices in life, sometimes we, stay, we sit back and we, we obviously, we, we make choices in life. For every choice that we make in life, there is a repercussion. There is a repercussion. Every, every decision that we take in life, there is a repercussion. So you don't have to hurt people in order to be in a relationship. You don't have to sleep with your friend's husband in order to, for, for you to find true love. I tell you, for every woman out there, there's a man out there that is waiting for you. All you need to do is just do the right thing and then pray and God will order your footsteps to that bone of your bone and flesh of your flesh. You don't need to sleep with a man to prove a point. You don't need to sleep with a man to spite your friend. You don't need to sleep. The man has made a decision to marry that woman. He has made a decision to marry that woman. You, there is nothing you can do about it. She is his wife. So you, 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 you don't need to either seduce the man or even if the man is the one uh, obviously, um, making a pass at you. you don't need to sleep with him to to find your own true happiness. You don't have to and you don't need to. So women out there, give a bit of respect and regards to womanhood. Because there's the narrative that obviously men actually think, you know, to be quite, 70% of men actually think that they can get any woman at any time, including the married women. These days, there's no respect. In the past, when we're growing up, the moment you say you are married, people honor you, people respect you. But these days, even when you tell uh, some men that you're, they don't even want to know, so, well, that makes the two of us, me two are married. So there's no value anymore for a uh, womanhood because women have decided they've made them they've rubbished this value in the old times the value and the respect that women used to have they've rubbished it 
uh, they've made it so i mean womanhood so it's like there's no value against womanhood even in churches you hear all kinds of stories this one is sleeping with this that one is sleeping with that that one is you know there's the level of recklessness people are reckless these days with their body and yet the bible teaches us that your body is the temple of the most high god So respect yourself as a woman. Carry yourself properly, whether married or single. If you are, you are, if you are a married woman and you're sleeping around, I, I don't know, obviously, I, I, I don't know what to say to you, you know, because, um, I mean, it's, it, is, it is despicable. It is. Because there's no justification for your action at all. What are you going to tell your children? What legacy are you leaving? As a married woman, what example are you setting for the upcoming young girls who are looking up to you as a role model? And then this is why a lot of young girls, they don't want to get married anymore because the value for this institution called marriage has been thrown to the dogs. You don't know the difference anymore between a woman who is married, a woman who is single. The married women, they make themselves even more available than even the single girls. And then you just keep wondering that what is going on. So respect yourself, both married and single. Give yourself a bit of respect. Give this institution a bit of respect. Respect yourself. Respect womanhood. Carry yourself properly. Let that man out there know that you are not so cheap. You are not available. Carry yourself properly. For the married women, let, let, let the respect begin to come back. That's all in this respect that married women used to have. Respect yourself as a woman. It comes with honor. It comes with a lot of honor and it comes with a lot of blessing. It is not what you do when people are watching, but what you do when no one is watching. Respect womanhood. Respect the, the fact that you are a woman is a blessing. I tell you, don't rubbish yourself. Be a friend that can be trusted. Be a friend that can be trusted. Your friend leaves you with her husband. It's none of your business. You, you don't have anything with the man. Not uh, some of them. They'll be doing their eyes. Pa, 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 pa. The man saw you before he married his wife. You don't have to do that. You are more than that. And then you see a man's wife and you are comparing. Oh, I'm even finer than his wife. But he saw you before he married his wife. So respect yourself. You don't have to hurt another woman in order to be happy in your relationship. You don't have to take that woman's husband. You don't have to continue sleeping with that woman's husband. Some of them, they intentionally take the man away and is sleeping, staying out late in the night to spite the wife in order to destroy the relationship. You don't have to do that because what goes around comes around. Yes, it comes around. What goes around comes around. One day it's going to be your turn and then you see how sweet it is. Respect married men, respect married women, respect the marriage institution. Once a man is married, a woman is married, no go area for you. Withdraw. You don't have to be, you don't have to hurt the man, hurt the woman, hurt the children of a relationship just because you want to make yourself happy. You don't have to. Because whatever happiness you think you're, you're getting at that moment is going to be short-lived. 
and then you end up becoming dishonored you end up becoming disgraced you end up be be becoming disrespected and then on the inside of you you know you are not happy you are hurting on the inside of you and then later you say it's the devil what devil you knew the man was married from day one and then you and then and then you went into that relationship and then when you see his wife you're going, you pretend as if nothing is going on you 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 you, you, are, you are just a, you are a slut that's what you are and then you are eating with the man's wife she's confiding in you she's believing in you she's thinking that she has a friend and behind her you're sleeping with her husband you are nothing but a slut you are worthless and until you begin to now retrace your footsteps and you ask God for forgiveness. Because someday you're praying that someday you'll be married also. It is called betrayal of trust. A friend leaves you in her home and goes on a short journey and then you, you end up sleeping with her husband it is betrayal of trust there is no justification a friend sent you on an errand to the husband at work maybe for you to get a job and you uh, you go to the man's office and you end up sleeping with the man it is betrayal of trust you got to stop it stop it now before Nemesis catches up with you. Stop it. you got to fear God. You think the friend is not seeing you. Nobody knows about it. But God knows about it. God knows about it. So you got to stop it. And the woman is crying and she's crying and she's praying and she's calling upon God so you are placing a curse on yourself she might not know that you are the one because you are her best friend but she's you know she's praying and calling God, the fire of God on that woman that is trying to destroy her home so you are placing a curse on yourself every day that woman is crying and calling God on your on your behalf so you got to stop it you got to repent right now you got to repent and desist from that kind of conduct. And there are some of the women, they come out and they swear and they, and, and, and they, they take a vow and they say, oh, I don't have anything to do with this man. He's just my friend. He's my friend's friend. We are just close. And then you still go behind and you're sleeping with the man. The wrath of God is upon you. Yes. Because as, the, as you're causing the woman pain and are you taking her away from her husband, from uh, uh, taking her husband away from her, you're taking the man's attention from the children and from the man. You're placing a curse on yourself. Because you, you, are, you have betrayed that friendship. And then you, you come to, 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 to the family home, you are invited, and then, and then any minute the man is in the kitchen, that's when you remember you want to take something from the fridge. You are a slut. You're making, you, you're cheap. Go find your own man. What you're saying is that you're not capable enough to have, to find your own man. You are more than that. You should be more than that. Go find your own man. Leave that married man alone. Leave your friends, your best friend's husband alone. It's the relationship is not going to take you nowhere. Stop feeling comfortable being a second best. It doesn't matter how young you are. It doesn't matter how old you are. Don't ever think that, oh, what can I do? At the end of the day, there are no men. Uh, so let me make do with this. That's a lie from the pit of hell. That is what the devil is using to deceive you. Any relationship that you cannot come out boldly to declare, it is an unhealthy relationship. It is toxic. Any relationship where the man cannot introduce you to his friends, to his family members, where people don't know you as a pair, as a couple, you are making yourself cheap as a woman because the man 
woman is gonna walk off and obviously do whatever a man can get married at the age of 70 and, and even 80 and 90 but it's not the same with women so women honor yourself honor your body don't allow that married man misuse you don't allow that married man delay cause a kind of delay in your life don't ever think in your heart that you are doing the right thing sleeping with your best friend's husband the man is using you the man is taking on due advantage of you be smart be wise as a woman you are better than that you are better than the second best you are better than a side chick have you taken a look at yourself on the mirror you are beautiful your own man will find you you don't have to hurt another woman in order to find happiness no you don't have to so in in rounding up this evening there are three messages three me just there are three messages a, a woman is sending out each time she makes up her mind to sleep with her best friend's husband the very first one is that she's saying loud and clear my friend is superior to me she's better off than me that's why you're, you're trying to, to you're trying to you're trying to eat the crumbs because she's eating as the queen as the man's wife on the table she is royalty and you're eating from the crumbs they are hiding you and taking you to some kind of dirty place where nobody will find you in the night and and then, and then they are having i mean you are better off than that so you you, you are saying to her she's better you know she's you're a second class citizen she's better off than you she's superior than you she's the one in charge if anything happens to the man she's the one if anybody, if the whole society, the community, they know her as the man's wife. Nobody knows you. So you are inferior to her. Is that the kind of life you want to continue living? You are better off than that. So you got to stop it now. So and then secondly, each time you are going behind, you are sleeping with your best friend's husband. You are saying to the world that you are worthless. You're saying to the world that you are worthless. You might think that you are spiting the wife at home, but you're saying to the world that you are worthless. Because something that has what? Something that has value will not be hidden. If you have value and you, you have a kind of value, you see diamonds, diamonds are, are obviously are handled with care. Everybody wants to be around diamonds. Because it's a precious, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a precious ornament. So when they are hiding you, you are hiding, the man is hiding, you are doing muchu, 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 muchu. Nobody knows you. Even you are talking to the man's wife, she doesn't know you are sleeping with the, with the husband. She's even saying to you, my husband keeps late nights. Meanwhile, the late nights is being kept, is, is spent with you. So you are worthless. You are not smart, you are worthless. Because the man will finish with you clean up and go back to to where he belongs to his wife he knows where his heart is where his treasure is he will go back to his wife and his children so you are, you are saying to the world that you're worthless and then the very third message you are trying to send out each time you are sleeping with your best friend's husband you're telling the world that you can't find a man of your own so somebody else has found this man perhaps when he used to be very skinny he didn't have money he didn't have nothing and then somebody else found him and saw all the potentials in him and stood by him in thickness and in 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 in, in lack and in want and then the, the woman was there with him and for him when he was ill everything the times they used to eat once, once you know, they couldn't afford three square meals. She was there. When he had only one shirt and one pair of shoes, she was there. And then she molded him. She supported him. She gave him all the support as the helpmate that she is. 
and then you strange woman from nowhere you decide to come and then you you decide to now want to be the side chick so why because you are saying that you don't have the resources on the inside of you to build a man of your own that's what you're saying you want already made You want a man who has already been built by a woman. I tell you, for every marriage, no matter how rich, no matter how poor, no matter even if they've been married for only one year or they've been married for 30 years, they've been married for 25 years, it's a lot of investment that that woman has put in. She has put in prayers, sleepless nights, fasting. She has put in money, she has put in emotions, she has cooked, she has cleaned, she has washed, she has prayed. If you see the wealth of investment, that and then now the man is who he is and you are seeing him, you don't know, you don't know how it came about. So each time you are with that, that man, you are saying to yourself, you're not capable of being a helpmate to a brand new man that you can start with from whatever point you have met him and that you're able to build yourself together in order to be successful. You are saying you're not capable. You are saying you, you are, you are, you, 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 you don't, you are not worthy. You're saying you, you don't have what it takes to build a man. Or to be with a man, to start with a man. You are saying you don't have what it takes. You are saying you are a fair weather friend. That is what you, that's the, the message you are sending out to the world. So in rounding up, I am here just to encourage you, not, not to chastise you, to just begin to sort of deliberate on your actions. If you have been in the past, maybe even up to today, you've been sleeping with your best friend's husband and the woman doesn't know, you are sowing a seed of discord. You are destroying the family. You are destroying the happiness in the home. You are destroying the children. You are leading that family. They might end up divorcing. Even if they don't end up divorcing, if the woman finds out the husband is cheating, so there's a lot of bitterness, there's a lot of anger, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of acrimony in that marriage. Everything centers around you. I don't see how you want to get any kind of happiness out of that kind of unhealthy relationship. And I'm saying to you right now, you got to back off. And I'm saying to you right now, you got to back off. If you don't want to back off because you are being seen as a betrayer, back off because you are covering your own blessing. Back off right now because you want God's blessing to be upon you. Back off and ask for forgiveness and then begin to pray to God to give you your own man. I'm saying to you that you are beautiful. I'm saying to you that you are capable of finding that man. The man. I'm saying to you, you've got the qualities not to be a side chick. You don't have to be a side chick. Your own man will find you. I'm saying to you, you don't have to be a betrayer. You don't have to betray that friend in order for you to find your happiness. I'm saying to you, back off. Back off. Back off. If you feel so relationship, even the one you have with a friend, stay away from that man and the wife. Stay away now. Stop covering your blessing. Have you been praying for so long and then nothing is happening? Are there things that are going on around you? You need to begin to check the things you've put your hands into. Indeed, yes, God does not punish us based on our own sins. But I'm saying to you, now is the accepted time. Now is the time to begin to change. Now is the time for you to change. Now is the time for you to change. Leave that man alone. Stop betraying that friend of yours. Be a friend, an honorable friend. Give women honor. Give married women honor. Even if you are single, let men begin to have respect for women. Let us begin to bring back that old respect that women used to have. Let us stop this old, this narrative of men thinking that they, uh, they can get any woman at any point in time. And I pray that even as I've given you this message, in case you didn't know in the past, maybe nobody told you, now you've known it is wrong for you to sleep with your friend's husband. It is wrong for you. Stop sleeping with your best friend's husband. Stop trying to seduce 
seduce that man. Stop trying to 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 corner that man. Stop trying to incite the 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 uh, a kind of acrimony in a, in a relationship that God has brought together. Remember, the Word of God says that what God has joined together, let no man be uh, put asunder. Do not allow the wrath of God to come on you. Do not allow the wrath of God to come on you. Stay away from that married man. Stay away from your best friend's husband. It is wrong. It is not acceptable. And as I close this uh, this evening, I pray that you will deliberate on this word and begin to retrace your footsteps and to obviously to completely cut off every link that you have um, uh, with that man, your, your best friend's husband. It is wrong. Cut it off now. Cut it off now. And I, 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 I pray that even as you cut it off, you will see that the, 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 the blessing of God will begin to come upon you and things will begin to move for you. And then your beauty and your glory will begin to come out and begin to be seen by that bone of your bone and flesh of your flesh. Ask God for forgiveness. God is a forgiving God. He will forgive you and then he will begin and then you begin to build yourself and then a good relation, a good man will find you and I pray that that will be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you sometimes within the weekend where I'm going to be talking about another topic. If you've been touched by this, obviously by this um, by, by this uh, broadcast, you're free to send me um, a messages on um, Facebook Messenger or you can send me an email at uh, ketokoli at uh, k sorry ketokoli11 at yahoo.co.uk or kmasterclass at aol.com and I thank you for listening and I pray that God will continue especially for the young women I pray that God will continue to, to direct you I pray that you continue to know the value of what a true relationship is and I pray that you continue to understand that relationship is not all about sex and money there is more to it and I pray that God will direct you even as you've had this this short message and that this message will not be in vain that your life will be impacted and be touched through this message and it will bring about a turnaround in your life in the mighty name of Jesus thank you for watching see you soon bye bye bye